Hey everybody, welcome back to That's So Fringy podcast. I'm Rick. Kristen. And this is Beans. We are missing Bethany. It is her anniversary. So her yeah, and congratulations. Bob are out having dinner and having a good time. So we have Beans instead. But he does not a big conversationalist. <laughs> we just got done talking to PJ and Abby from Conspiracy Pill Podcast. Uh, man, it was a great episode. We mm-hmm. had a lot of fun talking with them about aliens. Aliens. That's right. What are they? Who are they? Where do they come from? Uh, all of the wild um, conspiracies and thoughts and um, options that you guys have out there on the internet for for these things. And so we're just kind of go down some of those rabbit holes and talk about some of those things. But first, mm-hmm. we wanted to talk about our Instagram page. Don't forget that we are on Instagram. If you guys aren't following us on there, please yes. do. Uh, if and you don't our have Telegram Insta- chat. Yeah, if you don't have Instagram, you can join us on Telegram. Where it's been super um, fun we just to. we're just throwing some information on there, um, some things that come up throughout the day that I want to share with all of you guys. We don't have to do a full episode on it. We can just kind of give information as we go. So hopefully, uh, for those of you that are on there, you're enjoying that. And for those of you that aren't, all of those links to the Instagram and the Telegram channel, uh, YouTube, all that stuff is in the show notes. So. Give us a follow. Uh, For those of you that haven't, please review, like, share, subscribe, all those things. Those are the things that um, keep the algorithms bringing us to the forefront of everybody's mind. We have a very Christian-leaning message, uh, unapologetically, and uh, we hope that you like that and that you want to share that with the rest of the world because we know we do. So um, our stance on aliens and the things that you talk we talk about today in this episode, you'll hear um, that we approach it from a very Christian uh, worldview. So with that, you got and anything the con- else? the Conspiracy Pill podcast, so you can find them on, on uh, all your podcast platforms. But they also do, on Wednesdays, they do a live. I think that's how they film their episodes, which is kind of cool because then they can interact with people and it's on yeah. Rumble. So, and they do pill. lives. Yeah. So you can, you can chat with them and, and ask questions and stuff like that during the, yeah. during the episode, which is cool. They're also doing a Monday night, uh, Bible study type thing, which is really cool. Uh, I just listened to an episode on Ezekiel from them. Um, you guys need to check We've it out. We've talked about doing some lives here and there, but we haven't actually done them yet. So let us know if that is something you would be interested in, where we kind of do more of a, don't have a big topic, but we kind of just open it up and talk to people. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know on Instagram uh, or on the Telegram if you guys want to do that. Or if you're more of an email type person, uh, you can go onto the website. Um, that's so fringy podcast.com. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the very first page, there's a contact portal there where you can just type in your information and send it right over to us and we will get back to you. So hopefully you guys enjoy this episode as much as we did. And, uh, with that, we are getting into it. Here is conspiracy pill podcast with PJ and Abby. Let's go. Welcome back, everybody, to That's So Fringy Podcast. I'm Rick. Kristen. And we are here with our friends from the Conspiracy Pilled Podcast. It's PJ and Abby. How are you guys doing? Good. How are you? Yeah, doing great. Excited to be here. We're so glad that you guys uh, penciled in some time for us because uh, we've been wanting to talk to you guys about aliens in a bad way. We love <laughs> we love talking about all of the weird stuff, as you guys can imagine, and uh, you know all of the fringy things. But we like to keep everything kind of on a on a biblical foundation, as uh, as everybody knows that listens to us. And so, with that, we're going to just kind of jump into a conversation about what are these things, man? What are these aliens? What have you guys figured out? Because I know a lot of people think, you know, they're, they're our creators. They're the ones yeah. <laughs> that, uh, that brought us into the world, some kind of weird experiments, all kinds of things like that. Where are you, what are your guys' take on all this? So, well, <laughs> this is my favorite. Cause I think Abby likes talking about aliens the least of anything. So I always <laughs> like that. Nice. Um, but no, uh, we started, we did a four part series. Well, it, we did a three part series, but when I looked back through season two, I was like, it was kind of a four part series. Cause we started with 
the Anunnaki. And we start with this idea that like there's these, you know, these alien scientists who mixed us up in a lab and put us here in a terrarium and this is some type of prison planet, prison earth thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we started there. I don't know if Abby has things to say about that. And then we went into like the other main types. But that's, and I think it started even earlier when I realized that there's alien cults all around the world for a long mm-hmm. time that all have different names for the Anunnaki and just like it's the same story. It's the pl- mm-hmm. it's the Pleiadian tw- worshippers, yeah, the, the Raelians, the uh, yeah, yeah. Heaven's Gate Zach- cult. What is that? Yeah. Zach- oh, yeah. Zach- Zachary Sitchens, I believe. Zachary Zachary Sitchin. Sitchin, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, I've read that book. It's it's really interesting the way that the author tries to lay out how we are, you know, uh, f- from these other planets where they're trying to seed um, another planet mm-hmm. and all those things. And there are there are a lot of stretches where they try to mm-hmm. tie it to the Bible and and. And, and I say stretches because I've read the Bible. Right. You know? Yeah. Unlike <laughs> the people who are on the history channel. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, it, and I wanted to mention because the, the whole book, um, 12th planet for those that haven't read it, there is on, um, Michael Heiser. You guys know Michael Heiser. Yes. Yep. On Michael Heiser's website, he has a whole section, uh, that's dedicated to, um, basically disproving that whole thing. And uh, it's really interesting reading uh, if anybody's listening and they, and they've maybe read the book and they've thought that there's some connections there. It's a really good place to start to just kind of go through a biblical lens uh, of, of how you can um, b- make sense of, of all of that uh, from a biblical worldview. So if you guys haven't read that, that's, that's a good place to start. But for us today, we're going to talk about aliens in the way that we know them or, or the things that are coming out today. Cause we know that Congress is doing, you know, uh, hearings. All of these whistleblowers are coming out. They've got all this information that is, uh, deep secrets, black yeah. sites, uh, underground military bases, all of these things. So why don't we jump in with, you guys telling us a little bit about the research that you've come across and uh, what it is that that you've built on to uh, to figure out this whole conundrum of a idea. Yeah, we actually did. So you're talking about the David Grush testimony for Congress. We actually did mm-hmm. uh, sit down, watch the whole thing, pause, react, bring up. I think it ended up being like four hours. It's long. It was a yes. very long. <laughs> yeah, it was like and it was on a regular podcast. It was just like, hey, let's get on one night and just record and talk to people. And I, the testimony was two or two and a half hours. Yeah. So that that with commentary ended up being like four hours long. Uh, but did you, where did you want to start with this, Abby? Because we've done a lot of research. Like I said, we started with Anunnaki. We went through the Greys, the Lizard People, the, the Pleiadians, and then we did the David Grush testimony. I think where we kind of start is that it's there's something right they're real, <laughs> yeah. but what are they? And I think a lot of times Christians will will say they are either real or they're demons. Mm-hmm. You know, either aliens exist or they're demons. And I, I think that they can be real. I don't think that that's a binary choice. Right. Sure. Right. Yeah. That that the Bible says that there are. A bunch of different races of beings that are not humans that live in the heavenly realms and we're just like okay but those are definitely not aliens and i don't know (laughs) what where the disconnect comes from yeah because i think that 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 would lead you to believe that some of them are fallen and some of them are not and the ones that are not are probably unlikely to be interacting with us unless god has given them a specific command to interact with us because that's the pattern that's the that's how i think you can tell it apart right is like God's God's idea is not confusion. That's Satan's, you know, realm. Yeah. So, yeah, there's definitely moments in the Bible where a messenger comes from God and says, "I'm Gabriel. God sent me to tell you this." And also, and don't freak true. out because oh, yeah, I yeah. probably look like an alien. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I look really weird. Yeah, well, I look you different. Yeah. You, and, and yeah, I was listening to your guys Ezekiel, and it's the episode you guys are talking about how it's it's this dude's a wild man. Right. He's all yeah. business, and, <laughs> yeah. but, and he's seeing something that he doesn't understand. And, and it's really hard for us to even understand where he's coming from because we haven't seen it ourselves. Mm-hmm. But a lot of the uh, stuff that he's seeing is a- out of this world almost, you know, in the, the unseen realm, you know, going back to Michael Heiser, where he talks about how there's this, you know, 
piggybacking on what Abby was saying, there's this whole other realm of beings that we know nothing about or or we have very little information about. And I think that's by design. I don't think God wants right. us to really spend a lot of time uh, yeah. focusing on the unseen realm. I think he wants us to focus on our realm <laughs> and and making it a better place, you know, like we should be, like Jesus says. Right. This this could even go back one step further, I think, which is it with that thought is we talked also about the tree of uh, the knowledge of good and evil mm-hmm. and kind of the connection that a lot of people believe, I think, has a connection to things like uh, what I wasn't I was going to say LSD, but that's not what I'm trying to think of. Um, psychedelics. Psychedelics in general, but there's this DMT. Oh. DMT. Oh, yeah. Right. And yeah, then some, some people will yeah. say like, well, this is unlocking that thing that lets you see this other realm. And I'm mm. actually not disagreeing with them. I'm just thinking there's a reason we weren't supposed to eat from the tree. There's certain mm. things we're not right. supposed to have knowledge to. And I, I liken this generally to there's things I'm not going to teach my kids till they're ready. Sure. And, and God is always known as a father. So it's like the Gnostics and other, you know, false religions will use this to say, well, actually, Satan's the good guy because he gave us knowledge. And it's like, yeah, but I could give a gun to a three-year-old and <laughs> like the gun could be good to defend yeah. me. Mm-hmm. But if I give it to a three-year-old, that could be really bad. Like there's certain things that we're just not meant for yet. Right. Um, and I think seeing and understanding that stuff to some degree, like people, people are taking LSD, seeing things, trying to find out what they are. And it's like, maybe, maybe we shouldn't, maybe we shouldn't do that. But yeah, yeah. It, 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 one person also described the heavenly realms. I, I'm trying to think if they use scripture to back this up, but it was just kind of a thought experiment anyway. Mm-hmm. Which is like, we have X amount of types of animals, plants, bugs, things on earth. Like it's been the billions or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yet we think that heaven is populated by like two things. Right. Like the, the, they all look just like it's just a, yeah, just angels with halos and wings and demons with with horns and pitchforks. Yeah, yep, yep. yeah, yeah. It's yeah the pretty, go ahead. So, oh, um, the Bible doesn't say much about those beings, right? Mm-hmm. And throughout tradition and throughout history, we've we've filled in a lot of details. So Christians have this idea that we know all this stuff about angels, but most of it is just what's kind of been passed down and speculated and most of it came from paradise lost by john milton and yeah, sure. and all of that yeah even even the, the halo thing is a sun disc like mm-hmm. egyptian thing that was added on it's not christian yeah. at all uh but you you mentioned michael heiser earlier he does a good job and i'm working my way through his two books angels and demons right now he goes, does a good job of saying the limited knowledge in the bible we have on angels is this this and this and this mm-hmm. right so we got cherubim we got seraphim angels means messenger like he goes through all of it and then he has a book about demons and the things that we kind of can speculate and know from the Bible. But even that is just a, a glimpse. And even the glimpse is beyond most Christians understanding where it is literally the cartoon version and yeah. nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. You got pitchforks and all yep. kinds of Dante's <laughs> Inferno type of imagery, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. And, and it's very confusing. You know, I just did an episode <laughs> where I was ranting about how, how religion is so confusing and how mm-hmm. it's almost on purpose. You know, like th- you can tell that there is this mass confusion so that you can't figure out what it is that you're actually supposed to be doing. And, uh, I said, we haven't figured this out yet. We haven't figured out what aliens are. We like, we can't all just get together and, you know, pull our notes together and figure this out. And I think we can, but Mm -hmm. they don't want us to. And so there is all of this confusion that keeps us all doing this where we're all just talking about it, bringing our notes together and trying to figure it out. But when, when we say there's UFOs in the sky and that there's there's all of these things going on, people usually uh, immediately think aliens, right? Because right, that's yeah. what we know. We hear about Roswell. We hear about all these different things. But, you know, when it's coming out in Congress now, it's it's mostly just us, right? It's It's the Americans... Or the, the, the governments of the world, these deep black projects that are making these vessels and, and, and flying around the sky, uh, secretly. And, and we all say, Oh, those are aliens. When the reality is, and, and Michael Heiser again to, to, uh, talk about him, he actually has a novel. I don't know if you guys know about this novel that he has, but it's a very interesting novel because he, you know, the guy, the main character goes into this deep underground base and he's, and there's all these alien craft and all these different stuff. It's a very interesting thing because he was really into UFOs, uh, mm-hmm. before he passed, unfortunately. But, uh, what do we think? Do we think that they're all, all the UFOs are man-made or are there some that are 
you know, alien craft. And I don't think, yeah, I don't think they're all man-made. Uh, I, sure. I think there is definitely a portion of them. I, I don't know what you, I, I'm sure Abby probably thinks the same way because we've talked about this a lot. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, like, look, 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 people would use the B-52 stealth bomber. Maybe I'm getting that wrong. Maybe it's B-2 stealth bomber. I always get it wrong. I think it's B-2 stealth bomber. People mm-hmm. would use the discovery of that. It was made at Groom Lake, which is Area 51. Mm-hmm. It, in the ni- early 1950s, it's all, that's fact, right? Um, people would use the fact that this triangular, weird-looking thing was explained a lot of UFO sightings later on to say it's all man-made. And I think they forget about things like the Foo Fighters. Mm-hmm. Uh, they forget about things like the Nimitz and stuff like that. So... I think it's a I think it's a collection of both. So this is another one of those like false binaries where it's like, is it man made or is it aliens? Uh and then the question then becomes what are aliens? But I think it's I think the answer to is it this or that is yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's very confusing, you know, and you and you get yeah. to a place where you 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 just don't know what to believe. And and when it comes to like the Palladians or this uh this galactic alliance i'm sure you guys have heard this we've where talk, covered it yeah yeah sure. there's this galactic alliance that's you know th- here to save us from ourselves and and they want to come in and <clears throat> and uh help us but then when you walk down all that these palladians believe or their their mindset it's new age it's a lot of yeah. new age doctrine um and then we know that you know, Anton LaVey said that all of those new age doctrines are essentially just Satanism uh, mm-hmm. rebranded. And so now we have to say, OK, what is that? You know, is are these Palladians really here to help us or and then. Yeah, no. <laughs> who, who was it? No. Who was it that drew? Was that uh, that was Aleister Aleister Crowley? Crowley? Yeah, yeah he so drew. He draws I, I think that. it was Lamb was the name of the demon that he saw mm-hmm. and it looked like a, a gray. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's really interesting how you've got, you know, this Satanist drawing a gray alien Mm -hmm. and people are saying that the grays are, you know, here to just, you know, take experiments. And and now you've got people being abducted and and experiments being done on them. I mean, there's been multiple cases of that. And it all just depends on who you believe. Right. Who do we believe? You know, this actually I think there's another uh, misunderstanding in the Christian community about demons in particular is that mm. uh because they're against god that they are all like hand in glove working together friends mm. like it i don't think that that makes sense for their character anyway like fallen angels and we could distinct between fallen angels and demons if we want to get into that but like for all the fallen angels to just be like yeah no we left god but now we're like completely in agreement on everything we don't fight each <laughs> yeah. other we don't send our guys to kill your guys <laughs> yeah. uh which would be if you're a christian you believe that all religions that are false religions are some type of demonic or fallen angel worship sure. they're fighting each other too the hindus and the muslims are fighting so it doesn't make sense right uh, it yeah. doesn't make sense if you even go back to like greek and and all this stuff like you got the athena worshipers fighting the you know all this stuff right but uh with the whole alien thing you talk about this galactic federation people will look at the three main alien types and i say three main alien types because that's the three western main alien types there's tons of alien types mm-hmm. uh the grays which are like and maybe they're harmful maybe they're not they're experimenting on people but you know then you got the reptilians which are just like overtly evil you know yeah. like they run the government and they have these underground bases and they eat people and adrenochrome and all that stuff mm-hmm. and then the pleiadians which are like the saviors who are like anti-nuke hippies <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so like they set themselves up to have a hero and i i feel like that's on purpose i feel like mm-hmm. if you create the villain and the hero you know, it's like that Mission Impossible 2 plot. It was like, create the hero and the villain. And then, you know, yeah. when the villain is bad enough, people run to the hero. But it was all created by the same thing, controlled by the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a slippery slope of control. Eventually, when you, when you get to the end of it, you realize that it, it's not about help or salvation. It's all about control. And it's, a, it's dangerous because... You know, if we put all of our hope and all of our dreams and all of this into some galactic federation, then then we're not really standing on the rock. The, we're yeah. not standing on Jesus, you know, and and a lot of people try to put those two together. They try to say that Jesus is some galactic, you know, guy that came in and tried to <sighs> tried, tried to help us. You know, Abby, you covered Pleiadian space Jesus. What are your thoughts on that? Whole thing? <laughs> yes. Tell us about. <laughs> We've space been getting Jesus, this in our comments Abby. a lot lately about oh. space Jesus. Space Jesus? <laughs> yeah. I think for a lot of people, for a lot of Christians, Jesus is just an, an idea. He's just a nice idea. And mm. so, Palladians, whenever they 
speak with people and it's generally not a physical encounter it's generally channeling yeah. so whenever they speak with people they tend to give them exactly what they want to hear like they take whatever nice thing that they already agree with and they're like see you're right about this and and i'm going to tell you more and i'm going to lead you down this path little by little so people who have some kind of good concept of jesus they'll be like yeah space jesus wants you to <laughs> listen to me <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just like it's like that. Jesus is a is a communist hippie meme stuff, right? It's like yeah. Jesus is just all the good things that I like. Yeah. So yeah. therefore, Pleiadian space Jesus is all the good things that I like. And I, yeah. I, I've I've learned this over the years is that uh, just because some and it's in the Bible, so I should have learned this when I was younger. Just because <laughs> someone claims the name of Jesus doesn't mean that they're doesn't. It's not the same Jesus all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and that's hard for yeah. people to figure out is that they're that when somebody says Jesus, you have to be a little more clear on that mm -hmm. point. You have to say, okay, which Jesus are you talking about? Are you talking right. about just the good teacher? Are you talking about space Jesus? Are you talking about, or are you talking about regular Jesus, the Son of God? Because those are all different things, and and sometimes people will get confused and start following this New Age doctrine because they think that it's all about love and light, and mm -hmm. and, and and we should all ascend, you know, because that's what Jesus did. He ascended. It was probably a spaceship that took him up, you know, that type yeah, of thing. Yeah, that is that's the History Channel version, right? Yeah, yeah. And it, it's scary because you got these these people that just want to serve God. They just mm -hmm. want to serve Jesus. They just want to do the right thing, and they and they're they've wandered down these paths because the internet is this melting pot of <laughs> you know truth mixed in with a whole bunch of disinformation. You know, and, and the best disinformation has elements of the truth in it, and it's really deceptive. Yeah, yeah, and that's what makes it that's what makes it difficult is you don't know. And like you were saying, you know, when the, when the UFOs came in, when we were, when we, uh, blew up Hiroshima and started, mm -hmm. started using nuclear weapons and everything like that. Why would these aliens all of a sudden show up when we're, when we're starting to destroy ourselves, right? It seems interesting that the timing of, of it is, is like, Hey, stop doing that <laughs> like it's more of a hey what are we doing here than it would be uh you know we're coming to save you or we're coming to rebuke you for for things like that like there's got to be something <clears throat> about the timing that that has always been interesting to me this made me think of something too uh we you were i was saying a minute ago that it feels like you've created the enemy and the good guys in, in the alien mm -hmm. lore right but if you look at the history of that and you just brought it up yourself the pleiadians step in after World War II, after the nukes, and they're like the anti-nuke savior guys, right? They're the yeah. hippie, hippie space Jesus savior guys. But where did like all this technology come from? If, if you believe it or not, like the lore is that the the Nazis were given tech by certain, you know, actually they were given tech that by the Pleiadians, and some people try to. We actually played a video of a pro Pleiadian woman who's like channeling some Pleiadian demon and <laughs> Pleiadian fallen angel, and she's yeah. like. Well, you see, they helped Hitler because, you know, for a greater good, and it's a little, it's above your pay grade. But my point is, like, if they're giving people the technology to create war, and then they're coming in as the saviors, it just kind of seems to, you know. Yeah, it's, it's very confusing. And, and then you know that, you know, we have the technology. So how mm -hmm. did we how did we get this technology? Do we just have really smart scientists that have figured out that how our how our world works and they figured out anti grav and all of those different things, or is it a reverse engineering like a lot of people say it is, where they where they got the craft and then they reverse engineered it? What are your thoughts on that? There's a lot of things that we wouldn't have imagined to do mm. without the suggestion. I think. Our scientists are that smart, mm -hmm. but who who thinks to who thinks I'm going to put a man on the moon? Hmm. The the guy who had that idea had that idea when he was a child. Mm -hmm. He had it in a dream, mm -hmm. and then he was you know Werner, Werner von Braun was known to like fly his toys around his living room and say he wanted to go to the moon. And <laughs> you start to wonder like where where did these ideas come from? The um. So you, you wonder where we would have gone with our technology if humans had just been left alone. Like yeah. where 
Vern- God's idea of where we should have progressed to was. Werner yeah. von Braun is so interesting. For people who don't know he's the Nazi scientist who was brought over through Operation Paperclip, ran NASA. Mm-hmm. And he not only said that he had the, these ideas forced into his head as a kid, which sounds kind of weird, right? Or like given to him as a child. But when he was asked about how the Nazis advanced their technology so fast, he said, we had help from them and pointed upwards. Hmm. So this is a guy who, like, in multiple ways seems to be saying, my my ideas and my technology were aided by something outside of this world. Yeah. So I do think, I think, I mean, I think David Grush said this too, and we could get into, like, David Grush, and if you think he's, you know, a plant or telling the truth or a opportunist or whatever. But it seems to be like him, Bob Lazar, a lot of these people for a long time have been a lot of whistleblowers that nobody knows the names of anymore have been saying like, yes, some of this technology we're developing, but we're getting it from somewhere else. We're getting the ideas or we're reverse engineering things that we found or things that were given to us. Mm -hmm. And that story goes back to the the 19 teens, even like there's people saying that back in the 19 teens with the, the Vril Society and. And stuff like mm-hmm. that. So it does seem, I mean, you could go through history too and be like, why do we have all these stories about, you know, <laughs> sky beings coming down and giving us fire and giving us farming? Uh, all, yeah. all the, like Ishtar gave people farming. Uh, mm-hmm. Prometheus gave us fire. There's, there's all these stories in history in all different cultures and all different histories that are like, something came down and gave us technology. And Searle's demon with, with computers. Mm-hmm. It, it, there's all kinds of, it, for all of history, like there's technological advances that everybody just seems to be acknowledging came from beyond us. So yeah, I, th- I think it's possible. Yeah. It's weird. Cause you go back to the book of Enoch and, and mm-hmm. the, it explains that that's what these fallen angels did, right? Was they gave this forbidden knowledge they gave, and it doesn't say specifically that they gave technology, but <laughs> it's, it's not a far cry. I mean, it's, it's not hard to imagine the fact that these fallen angels in their rebellion, would would give away this technology to mm-hmm. to advance humans past what they're supposed to be and i always liken the the uh, tree of the knowledge of good and evil as as being the hard way you know mm-hmm. like the tree of life and just staying with god and just following him and doing that like that's the right way and and the tree of knowledge of good and evil is the long way <laughs> so right, you can yeah. you can take that path if you want to but it's going to be confusing it's going to be long you're going to have all of these distractions coming in and that's kind of the path that we've been on right where we're trying yeah. to figure it all out whereas you know the the path of jesus or the path that god wanted us on was to just follow me and you don't have to know everything you can just follow after me and and when we do seek to grab all this information sometimes these entities will come in and be like oh you want something cool you want to see something shiny check this out or check this out you know and then we then we fall into this trap where we're now indebted to them because they've given us something and now it's probably a tit for tat there's got to be something that we now have to do you know oh so, yeah it's never free right but <laughs> right. There, there is there you can see this everywhere in the conspiracy community there is a desire and uh, in some ways it's almost like uh like they feel like it's owed to them for this antiquitech type stuff right like they're mm. like we had this thing that in, in a lot of cases we'll be getting to tartaria soon it's the giants the the giants biblically nephilim that gave them technology and they're like well we want it we deserve it we should have it and it's like mm. and so it's interesting you know it's like yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. So they go so far as to i saw a video today um attacking a friend of ours uh basically saying like you can't say the giants are bad because they're the ones who are going to give us the antiquitech we have to be nice <laughs> to the to the giants to the nephilim because they're yeah. going to advance our society yeah a christian understanding of nephilim is they're you know fallen angels sleeping with humans creating ungodly th- you know ungodly abominations but now yeah. the antiquitech people have gone so far to be like actually those are the people we're going to worship if it's not the mm. pleiadians if it's, if it's not the grays if it's not the lizard people it'll be the nephilim it, the, people are looking to worship something always yes we could be the clockwork elves with lsd or, or dmt people are looking to worship but they're just worshiping all the wrong things yeah well it's built in right it's yeah. built into our dna to to worship god mm-hmm. and but it, it doesn't necessarily always end up that way <laughs> right <unfortunately. Yeah. laughs> so let's talk a little bit about um the reptilians because this is a big one for people they yeah they they really especially those that are in kind of this whole 
Q movement, truth or community, where they're yeah. really, they're really big on the queen, the queen's uh, reptilian, you know, all these different things. Look at her eyes. They do this. And there's like all <laughs> of these different pictures and different things. Oh, oh, what was that crazy lady on the plane that was like, I'm not going to sit next to you, you know, because she thought he was yeah. a, she thought he was a reptilian. Gomez. We're not sure if that's really her. I don't think it's really her. Yeah. <laughs> it's silly. <laughs> that mother effer is not real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've all seen that. And it, and that's her. She believes, you know, that yeah. there are reptilians and that dude was one of them. And who knows? Who knows if yeah. she was a plant or if she what? But that's. This reptilian thing is a big deal. You know, these guys coming from Draco trying to take over the, take over the world. And, mm -hmm. and we've seen this in like Marvel movies and all of yep. these different things where it, it, it's not a surprise that they're trying to push this agenda. What do you guys take on the reptilians? I'm curious. You said Marvel a second ago. Sorry, I, I want Abby to talk about this for a second. But like you said, Marvel a second ago, and I was thinking to myself, like not only predictive programming, because like right after we did the reptilian thing, it seemed like that. Uh, what was it called? The the one where it's the the reptilians essentially are taking over oh, the world. Secret invasion. Secret invasion. But before oh, yeah. that, they made the reptilians the good guys, which I find very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't even think about that till now. But yeah, I think a lot about mythology throughout throughout time throughout cultures and you know what does the mythology say about you know why why would the stories a culture tells say we got this tech from a god instead of you know celebrating whoever invented it you would think that that guy would be like hey yeah. <laughs> that was me <laughs> so i pay a lot of attention to mythology and i think marvel is doing now marvel is is the main mythos that, mm -hmm. that they're they're doing what Greek myth was doing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not just Marvel, but Marvel seems to be tapped into it more than, more than anyone. almost any yeah. other yeah. thing. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, they've done, they've done a lot with the reptilians. Oh, or that, that type of concept. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, yeah, I, I haven't seen that, that show yet, but uh, you know, I've seen like, a couple that have have been really interesting like even even in game with thanos you know yeah. and how he wants to take over the world and how he wants to depopulate because did, he thinks go ahead did you yeah no i just want to add on to what you were saying did you notice that in end game the beginning of end game was them saying yeah it was a hard choice but it was good actually it was good that we depopulated the seas are clean the air is clean the mm -hmm. people have food and then all of seas uh season all of uh, what do they call it part four what am i trying to say they, phase four, all of phase oh, yeah. four okay. has mm -hmm. been the world dealing with the repercussions of overpopulation again. It's continually yeah. pushing like, yes, we understand emotionally it's hard to depopulate, but mm -hmm. look at all the good that came from depopulation and all the bad that came from repopulation. They're really pushing that one hard. They're, it's a whole yeah. Georgia guide zone stuff. But anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> I need to ask about reptilians. So, what did what did we want to talk about with the reptilians? Sorry, I didn't mean to get us off. Track. No, you're good, man. That's what we do here. We go all, down <laughs> all the rabbit holes. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I know that you guys talked about it on mm -hmm. on some of your episodes, and and uh, just for our listeners, could you guys just give a brief, you know, rundown of who they are, where they come from, all that different stuff, and and what the basic beliefs are. Sure. Yeah. So the reptilian stuff is interesting because they're like in all of these. I think there's always nuggets of truth in these things, but they also come with a lot of fan fiction. Mm -hmm. So the reptilians look, look, what, what we know about the reptilians is that people have worshipped reptiles throughout all of history. Mm -hmm. uh, there's every culture you've got uh, Sobex and you've got there's some Hindu gods that are snakes and things like that. Reptilian worship can be found in statues and literature and that for all of history so there's something there mm -hmm. uh but the the kind of i, I, I don't know if this is fan fiction or not, but they basically it's like they're this again i'm sorry i'm having a hard time because i have five different versions of reptilians in my head yeah got, like the draco reptilians which is like a, a planet and you got like nibiru you know like sekirai sitchin idea of of them mm -hmm. you've got a lot of different ideas of them but basically they are this giant alien race of reptile like things that can transform themselves to look like humans some people say that they manipulate the vibrational frequency this would be like a david ike believe that they manipulate mm -hmm. the vibrational frequencies to appear normal sized and human so they might still be 12 foot tall while they're mm -hmm. walking around they might not be wearing clothes but they 
put on a a, a, a glint. What do they call that? And fa- glamour, a glamour, yeah, a glamour, right? So it's yeah, it's yeah. very much like fairy uh, fairy lore in that way. Yeah. yeah. Um, they live underground and they have been infiltrating governments and societies and and stuff for all time. People like David Icke will say that this is the exact same story as the Nephilim. So he's saying in he's saying that there are master reptilians there's a name for them i don't remember they call them the elites or something like that he says those are the anunnaki or you could say fallen angels and the things they created are reptilian human hybrids of the nephilim so what he's saying is it's the same story but my thing with the reptilians is like we've followed this all the way to its logical conclusion as far as like if you're a david ike follower and i know some people didn't like this episode because they're like you focus too much on david ike and you focus too much on this and that i'm like mm. we can only cover every conspiracy that is got you know hundreds of thousands of hours of literature on it in in two hours or an hour and a half, we can only cover a yeah. certain aspect. And I said, well, we will talk about reptilians more. But in our episode, kind of brought it around to like, what does David Icke believe? And what are followers of David Icke believing? And when you get to the end of it, it is kind of what I mentioned earlier. It's this Gnostic heresy. It's saying that, you know, that uh, it's saying, oh, I'm trying to think of how, how I want to word this. But it's pushing Gnosticism. That's that's what mm-hmm. it that's what it is eventually, right? Is he saying that the g- beings that were created by God or in the Gnostic belief, angels are actually bad. Mm. The ones that God that made this earth created are bad, and God that created this earth is bad. So he's actually mm. taking it a whole other step where he's saying these reptilians are not the fallen angels. They're the angels that worship God. They will call him Yeldaboeth, and that Jesus was actually not from God. He was from this you know, he was the Pleiadian space Jesus. He was this yeah. other, you know, from the galactic council and he came down to save us from the evil God and the evil angels. And that we're all vibrational frequencies, man. And we're all don't exist. And it's all a simulation. It's, it's just this prison planet Gnostic heresy. So it just seems like all of these kind of come back to a few elements. It, it doesn't matter if it's grays. It doesn't matter if it's Pleiadians or reptilians. It all comes back in the end. If you follow the, the rabbit trail long enough to a, God didn't God God that created this earth is not the real God that he's like part of a pantheon and he's the bad one and that Mm -hmm. the the garden the snake in the garden gave you tech gave you information he's the good guy they all come back to it eventually you just have to follow it Uh, and and that one's not even hard to follow because David Icke says it in so many so many ways I'm going a little bit off of memory here so I'm sorry if that wasn't clear but I know that's good clarify it yeah and that's go ahead yeah I think what it kind of comes down to is people have the encounter with aliens that they want. Yeah. Mm. So if they want good aliens, if they if they picture an enlightened race living out there, then they'll have an encounter with the Pleiadians. If what they want is something to explain why the world is so evil, and they don't want it to be, they don't want the answer to be, well, humans are just bad. Mm. We live in a state of sin or anything like that, right? Right. Sure. Then they're like, well, H- Hitler wasn't bad it was it was the it was the reptilians the reptilians did this yeah. um so so they will have that encounter with aliens or if they want aliens to just be little <clears throat> weird things that kind of experiment on humans but are otherwise innocuous and y- you know calm. yeah I, yeah then they'll have a great experience i think absolutely i think abby's absolutely right but there is one weird inconsistency and i'm seeing I think some people are recognizing this and they're going the Mm. wrong direction to fix it. And that inconsistency is in the lore, the reptilians, you go back to Madame Blavatsky who influenced Hitler and both of them say this, the reptilians are the Jews like Mm. that. It goes right to, it's like very in their literature. It's very specifically Mm. the Jews, right? So the reptilians in their belief are the Jews and the Palladians are Thor. They're the beings of light, the ones to save us from the evil reptilians who Madame Blavatsky and, and, and Hitler and people like them will claim are the Jews and they'll be like, well, now I can't say Hitler's bad because I have to believe the, I have to believe the <laughs> Palladians are good because, you know, and, and I've seen it where yeah. we have people in our chat that are like, they're like, I want to believe the Palladians are good. I don't want to believe they're part of the same deception. So I have to find ways to make Hitler not to a bad make it guy. Fit. And this is, yeah. this is Kanye West, who, by the way, if you watch his music videos and you go through what he really says, instead of just these like bite clip, like he's a Christian, which is not true, yeah. ideas, he's pushing ca- uh, Kabbalistic Gnostic heresies all yeah. the time, everywhere. And that's why people like Kanye have to come to the conclusion that Hitler's not bad, 
because then the Pleiadians would be bad because the Pleiadians are very specifically referenced in, in Nazi literature as who gave them technology and who gave them their blessing and who are the, who are the master, who's the master race? You know what I'm saying? Like Hitler was brown haired yeah. and short and, you know, yeah, where did he get that where idea? Where did he get the idea? It's the yeah. seven foot tall, blonde haired, blue eyed Pleiadians. And it's, it, it's in their, it's all throughout their literature. People ignore it and, and like the debunkers and the, you know, um, People like that will say, oh, that the, they weren't. The, yes, the yes, the Nazis were bad, but they weren't like they weren't like that bad, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. cultists. Come on, guys. Yeah, <laughs> like they're bad, but they're not that bad. They're not cultist bad. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't understand that belief. It's so weird. Yeah. Well, when you try to make things fit to yeah. to, as Abby was saying, to what it, how it makes you feel, yeah. that's that's pretty much anti uh the bible and how and how things really work you know when you're I mean, if you go back to the garden of eden the first thing that happened after they had the the fruit was what they started pointing fingers at each other right there's like oh it was him or no it was her you know and that's the same thing that's true now is instead of us looking inward and saying mm -hmm. we have a lot of problems individually we all need to figure out our own lives and our own issues and our own things instead of doing that we're looking out saying this is a war between you know the palladians <laughs> and the reptilians and yeah. it's not my fault i fell into this you know war right. and, it, and i just i don't have a part in it i'm just trying to figure it out when the reality is is no you you're at the center of it you know you you're at the center of humans are the ones that uh they're trying to take out Mm -hmm. on one end and that uh, God's trying to lift up on the other end and you have to find your place in that and, and yeah, acquiesce so, to, to what it is that God's asking us to do. See, if this is, this is interesting because if, if you admit that humans are not good and getting better, if you admit that we're, the world kind of sucks, we're in a fallen state, we're in a sinful state that would make you feel guilt when you do things that are wrong. And what's guilt? Guilt is bad vibes, man. You can't have we, bad vibes, We live man. in the Burger King culture where you can just have it your way. So it's like, yeah. well, I don't, I don't want to talk about that because that makes me uncomfortable. So I'm just going to stay over here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it happens where, you know, I think we if we just start taking a lot more responsibility for, for our right. stuff, for our junk, for our things that we've done to this planet, for the things that we've done, you know, like, and, and some of it's been trickery, you know, I think a lot of it's been trickery where we've been tricked into uh, believing things or, or doing certain things or how we live. Um, I, th I think if we just realize that it's not the aliens that are making us do things. It's not the, the demons that are making us do things or the angels that are making us do things. We all have a choice, you know, and, and we can go down these rabbit holes all we want, but it should come in. And this is my opinion. It should come back to the individual's personal choice on whether they are going to follow <clears throat> after these aliens or whether they're going to follow after God. And, and, Everybody that we've talked about, like uh, Werner von Braun, you know, homies with, you know, Disney and yeah. uh, who else is he friends with? Um, I don't know. Alistair Crawley. And who's the guy mm -hmm. from Scientology? Uh, L. Ron Hubbard. L. Ron, Ron Hubbard. Hubbard. Yep. Like these guys are all hanging out together. <clears throat> right. Like how how is it that all these Satanists and and guys are hanging out together and talking about all these weird alien trips and things when really what they're just pushing is Satanism. And, and I mean, that's been admit, admitted by them. And it's, and it's crazy that, that people are falling for it and being like, Oh, the saviors of our world are these, are these aliens who the, the return of the gods, you know, they're going to come back to save us. I yeah. Unfortunately, you've got people like, um, I can't remember his name, but if there's if there's ever a guy who's looked like a Satanist or looked like a villain, <laughs> it's this guy. He's the guy who runs the modern Satanist church. Do you, you guys know who I'm talking about? Oh, what's that? He's got like name? a scar with a bad eye. Like he looks like a, a villain from a movie, right? Yeah. It's like if you wanted <laughs> to show Evil. some Yeah, if you want to show someone's a, a villain in a movie without having to say it, you would make them have a scar across their eye and their eye would be like all whited out, right? Like this is that <laughs> guy. And and he's taken Anton LaVey's work and he's taken it to an into new direction. And that new direction is, well, actually, we're the moral ones. Actually, we're the good guys. So instead of, you know, it, it's impossible, like you said, to do any research on any of these people, you know, and their connections. Werner von Braun, 
pretty easy connection. We know he's a Nazi. Uh, you know, Walt Disney supported the Nazis, friends with Werner von Braun, uh, friends with L. Ron Hubbard, who was uh, with Jack Parsons, who worked with mm. Aleister Crowley. They're all connected, right? Yeah. So you can, and, and then you look at the quotes and you, you'll see that they say these awful, terrible things that are pro Satanist ideas. So you have to have this weirdo villain guy that uh, says, actually, Satanism is good. Paganism yeah. is good. Uh, witchcraft is good. And I think that's where we're at in, in the, in our society. It's no longer, you can't hide from it anymore. People, there's a mm-hmm. lot of things that in the nineties and in the two thousand, early two thousands, people would say that doesn't exist. Uh, yeah. or, and you could show them to their face and they would just deny, 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 right? Like all the, all the information didn't matter. But now we're to a point where everybody's getting a little bit conspiracy pilled where they're like, they're seeing <laughs> that the things they thought weren't real exist, but it's, it's not enough to do that. I think that's why we do our show very differently than, than most people, because a lot of people say, here's some information, do with it what you will take, mm-hmm. you know, take the left hand path or the right hand path, do witchcraft, do this, do that, worship whatever God you want. And I think that that's really irresponsible. And yeah. uh, because, because now everybody knows that Walt Disney was a Satanist. So now they have to go, well, what is the, who do I worship? What is good? They're not, they're not denying that aliens exist. They're not denying that the, the world is run by sat- Satan, satanic pedophiles. They're just trying to decide who they are going to worship, who they're going to serve. Right. Yeah. 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 It's all wild, man. And, and I, I love the idea of there being these, you know, benevolent aliens that are, that are coming to save us. But, I just don't think that it's reality. You know, I think somebody did come to save us and yeah. it wasn't space Jesus. It was the real Jesus. <laughs> it was the son of God. Yeah. And, uh, and he didn't come from a spaceship. He, he came from a womb. Uh, you know, the, the, the most, um, the mothership. The, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like Mary, it. The I mothership. like it. Perfect. <laughs> Mary Mothership. Oh, yeah. There we go. Space Jesus and Mary Mothership. <laughs> oh, oh gosh. Sorry. I mean, that's probably blasphemous. And probably, um, but I, I think it's hilarious. Hopefully I'm not gonna get struck by lightning here to say <laughs> I know. <laughs> I think God knows that I'm a goofball by this point. Oh. Yeah. But uh, you know, just understanding that God God wants a relationship with us so badly that he would send his son into a womb, like the the, the place that is the most you know, like you're, you're nothing when you come out as a baby. You are literally nothing. You're relying on everything and everybody to feed you and wipe you and hold you and get you to sleep on time. All these different things like that was the God of the universe. That was the way that he chose to come down. Not He didn't get beamed down by Scotty to help us to understand who God is. He came in a way that is a lot more um, helpful in my opinion to us because I can't, I can't picture these. I mean, I can picture them, but I've never had an encounter with these gray aliens. I've never, and I know people have, and I know that they've had mixed reviews, you know, and people are saying that they're good and they, you know, they were, they felt all this love around them. And no, I start no, to say, yeah, no ahead. serious research or even the atheist researchers come to that conclusion. I think it's just like they're easily deceived uh, people. The people maybe had one encounter, but I think like even the people who don't believe in God or Jesus or any of that stuff look into the graves and are like, yeah, these things are not like the cattle mutilation, the Crazy. abductions, the probing. Like, yeah. how do you say, how, how are these good again? I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they're like, I just felt the love. I, I just <laughs> felt it. And it's like, well, if I was to wear a what would Satan do bracelet, like that's exactly what Satan would do, right? Is yeah, he would yeah. try to trick you yeah. and make you feel comfortable. Like, I want you to feel as comfortable as possible while I, while I probe you and put chips in you and all these different weird things. Like, just lay still. Everything's fine. <laughs> like, of course, that's what it's going to be like. And so we have to just be really careful. And yeah. that, I guess that's the message I wanted to, to have in this episode as we talked to you guys, got to know you guys a little bit. It's just that we we just have to be careful with this type of stuff because we know that there is an enemy. We know that mm-hmm. there is a, a whole group of people that think he's the good guy. And yeah. there's a whole group of us that think that he's the bad guy. And there's a whole bunch of deception. I mean, we've got Hollywood out there. Like, I mean, the guys from Avatar look real. They're beautiful. They're these, you know, giant blue creatures, but they're fake. They're manufactured. They're made. They're used as programming. So we just have to be careful of, you know, these reptilians that their eyes are blinking sideways and all of that. It's like, well, I mean, they can, they can make that 
happen in Hollywood pretty easy. Yeah. It is. It, it's interesting. It's interesting what you just said, Kristen, because this is the thing that I've noticed the change in Hollywood movies around aliens, right? It used to be don't talk about them, or scary. if you do, they're, they're scary and bad, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or fantastical and weird. So you just kind of understood they weren't real. Now they're like, no, they're real. Uh, so we have to have good ones. And so, like, they have this balance where it's like a lot of them, they're, they're actually just good. They're better than humans, actually, in most mm -hmm. cases, whether they're, mm -hmm. whether it's Superman, whether it's, uh, you know, the, the blue aliens from, uh, I forgot the name of that movie already. Avatar. Avatar. Yeah. Um, or, or it goes back to what I was saying where it's like, well, actually you have to take one side. Is it this aliens that you're on the side with or this aliens? And that, that's honestly what a lot of superhero movies have become mm -hmm. where all the superheroes are aliens. You just have to decide which one is your, yep. your savior, right? Well, yeah. and in the end, it just causes turmoil because we're yeah. constantly having to pick what do we believe? What do we think? You know, it's just this kind of constant confusion. And as you said earlier, we know God is not the, creator of confusion that's not that's not his his plan for us so th that should give us a idea of where where it comes from I, I think this is true about most of the conspiracy topics is like if the point of it seems to be confusion if the further you go into it the more mm -hmm. confusing it gets we know who the author of confusion is yep. Yep. Uh, and there's definitely things where you can look deeper and deeper and go oh wow my eyes are open i see the truth of this thing and it's very apparent and there's other ones where, yeah, like I said, it's just confusion and it's more and more and more confusion the more you get into it. And it's like a, a tractor beam that sucks you mm -hmm. in or black hole where all of your time and effort and mental energy goes into this confusing mess of fan fiction. Uh, and I, I think we know who, who comes up with that type of stuff yeah. and who promotes well, and it, that And stuff. it goes back to kind of the new age idea where you're mm -hmm. kind of always searching but never finding. You're, you know, you just got to do this next thing or you didn't do this quite enough. Get this book, do the, you know, it, it's, it's, you're never fulfilled yeah you, you always have to have, have an another answer. book and another part of your belief system to add on to that's all what new age is it's just like building mm -hmm. blocks of, of of crap instead of like the, the christian faith which is like i'm going to continue to study my bible and i'm going to continue to yep. daily you know re uh you know uh take up my cross every day to, to yep. deny myself every day you have the same mission but you're just practicing it right instead of searching for it till you're mm -hmm. old and gray you know yeah Mm -hmm. Well, this has been awesome, man. I'm so glad that you guys uh, were able to come on. I, it feels like we've been talking for a very short amount of time, but I just glanced down at say, the time yeah. and we're, it flew by. But uh, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to you guys. Where where can everybody find you? Uh, are you guys, you're, you have a podcast, obviously, you're on all the podcast spots. Where are you guys broadcasting? Uh, so we are streaming to Rumble mostly. That's kind of our home where, where all of our stuff is. We do a live stream Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and then we also do bonus like uh, behind the paywall type content. So that's on our locals channel. We're also on Rockfin if you people are familiar with Rockfin. But the easiest way to find all of our stuff is just go to conspiracypill.com. It's just mm -hmm. a link tree with you know Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, mm -hmm. Rumble, Odyssey, Perfect. wherever you can find us. So yeah. And then obviously, like you said, all the podcaster platforms itunes and google yeah. and everything yeah. yeah yeah and i've been you listening guys gotta to you check guys. out the check out the alien series that you guys did because it was <laughs> it was very interesting we just kind of touched on it today but they go they go much deeper in their episodes so you guys gotta listen to yeah it. this was just a taste now you guys <laughs> gotta really <laughs> dig in <laughs> Well, this has been fun, guys. We'll, we'll let you get going. We know that your uh, time is valuable. We've been uh, just so blessed that you guys were willing to come on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this episode will do well just because, uh, you know, conversations like this help people to make sense of all of the noise out there. You get all right. this noise. And when you've got people like us, a whole team, <laughs> a whole team of <laughs> us that are diehard uh, conspiracy theorists that are you yep. know, diving deep, you know, it's helpful for the average person that maybe is just getting into conspiracies or like you said a lot of people are just now getting red pilled and and, mm -hmm. and figuring out that the world that, that is around them isn't what they thought it was and so uh if you guys want more information um about them as as they said go to their website and uh for us we're obviously on all the podcast platforms we're over on youtube uh we we're on rumble all those places so you guys know where to find us with that, we're going to sign off and thank you guys one more time. This is mm -hmm. the Conspiracy Pilled Podcast with PJ and Abby. Thanks again, guys. We are That's So Fringy Podcast, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. Bye.